Welcome. In this video, as you can probably tell from the title, we're going to be applying exponential functions in what I think is one of the most widely discussed ways, and that's with compound interest. Now, we're also going to talk about simple interest too, um, but it's the compound interest that really connects nicely to exponential functions. So what's the basic premise before we get to the precise mathematics? Uh, imagine you have some amount of money, right? The idea is that you don't want to just save this money under your bed, right, or something like that. This is the money you want to save. It's called the principal. It's what you start with. The idea is instead of taking that pile of money and just maybe putting it in a box under your bed, you invest it. And there's all kinds of investments, but you invest it, and you get some interest rate. Okay. That's going to lead to another amount of money that you have that's yours. This is called the interest based on some interest rate you're given. What simple interest does is it just gives you that interest at the end of some cycle. So if your principal was $100 and I said you have simple interest of 10%, that would give you $10. And if you had that $100 just kind of sitting there in that account every year, you get $10. It never changes. It's just the same interest each time. That's simple interest. Compound interest is that you compound the interest. You take the principal, you invest it at some rate, at some rate, you get the interest, but then you take that interest, and you put it back on, you compound it back onto the principal, and you repeat the cycle. So in the simple interest case, if you had $100 invested at 10%, after two years, you'd have 120 dollars right you get tempered ten dollars the first year and then you sell the same principal you have another ten dollars the second year your total interest would be twenty dollars this is for simple interest and you start with a hundred it's still always starting at a hundred you put them together you have a hundred and twenty dollars that's simple interest all right so you start off right with a hundred and you're just adding ten for each amount of years each year it passes Compound interest would be different. Let's just say within two years. Okay, the first year, you start off with 100, you add 10. So you got $110. But the second year, your principal, or second cycle, whatever your length of time is, the second time it goes through, you're starting at 110. Well, sorry about that. You're starting at 110 the second time. Now you add 10% on, on that, which is... Not ten dollars anymore, but eleven. Put one hundred and ten and eleven together, and you don't have one hundred and twenty, but one hundred and twenty-one, and that's more. Now, at first glance, this doesn't seem very significant, one hundred and twenty versus one hundred and twenty-one. But if we look at a longer time period or more compounding periods, I should say again, compounding is just when we add the interest back on to the principal. The more and more this happens, the more and more the, we'll see the difference between compound and simple interest. So let's keep it simple with our principal. Let's still say, in general, our principal is $100. But let's give a different rate. Let's give 7%. That's a better kind of average rate. And let's say you do it for 157 years. And that's because I'm, I'm looking at, let's say, 1865 to now, which is 2022. That is 157 years. So imagine in 1865, you put $100 into an investment, you're getting 7% each year. What are you going to have after 157 years? Well, let's look at simple interest first. So simple interest is not so exciting. We have this formula, the interest you make, <coughs> excuse me, is equal to P times R times T. So I, this is not interest rate, this is the interest, it's the money you're going to get at the end. P is the principal, that's what you start with. R is the interest rate, that's a decimal. And T is time in years. We always analyze this in years. And this is, I mean, you could memorize the formula, but it's also very logical because in our case, think about what it's saying. It's saying you have $100 in the bank. That's your principal. The interest rate is 
So you get $7, but you get that every year, so you get it 157 times. Now, if you do this multiplication, right, let's see, we have 100 times 157 times 0 0.07, um, you're going to have $1,099. Right, you're adding $7 157 times, and that's not so exciting. We could also say, though, that, all right, well, that is the interest formula. What is your new balance worth? So let's introduce a new variable, B. In general, your balance will be that interest that you earned. Let's say, um, right this way, excuse me. The balance in your bank account, in this case, you have to st you start off with 100, but then you added the interest. You added PRT. And this gives us essentially a second formula for our balance for our simple interest. In our case, that's just gonna be, we start off with $100, and then we added 1,099. So that gives us $1,199, right? Okay, so we got these formulas, and we'll highlight them. This is our interest formula for simple interest. This is the balance formula for simple interest. Okay, I'm just gonna label this is for simple interest. Now, in our original little example with $100 and 10%, compounding after two cycles gave us a dollar more. Well, now we're going to see what happens after 157 cycles. And by cycle, I'm just thinking of this cycle right here. All right, we take our $100, invest it at 7%. That gives you some amount of money, $7. Then you take the $7, add it back on. Then you have 107 take 7% of that. Gives you interest, add it back on. You have more now, more than 114. You invest it and repeat, right? Over and over again, 157 times you go through this cycle. And the results are amazing. So let's talk about that. Okay, so same assumptions, right? P is $100. R is 7%. And T, our time, is 157 years. Well, okay, what's going on? Well, I'm going to keep track of this. So we've got years, right? Let's just go a couple of years. We'll do one, two, and three. And I'm thinking of the balance about what's going to be happening now. Okay, so say at the start of the first year, get $100. At the end of the first year, this would be the ends of the years, what will our balance be? Well, the balance would be 100, right, times the 7% we're gaining, that's our interest, plus the principal. And not too exciting. And that's just, well, let's just factor out 100. This will help us see some nice structure here. If I factor out 100, what's left? Well, let me write this in the other way. Why, why did I write it like that? Let's do it like this. We're trying to show you a pattern and amaze you. So we'll start with 100. And then we'll add 100 times 0 0.07. So if we factor out 100 out of this, what's left? Well, 100 divided by itself is just 1. And then 100 times 0 0.07, factor the 100 out, we get 0 0.07. OK, and let's condense that 1 plus 0 0.07. That's just 1.07. So our balance at the end of the year is just 100 times 1.07. and I could put an exponent of one there. There's no coincidence that that exponent matches the year because the next year, whatever that number is, 100 times 1.07, we're then gonna multiply that again by another 1.07, right? We're just multiplying it over and over again. So that's gonna be 100 times 1.07 squared. And if you're not convinced of that, just think, okay, well, this is my former balance from the end of the first year. So whatever that number is, we're going to have to multiply it by another 1.07 to have it go up 7% again. And then we keep repeating this pattern because in the start of the third year, we still have 100 times 1.07 squared. That's the end of the balance here. And we'll multiply it by another 1.07. And that's going to be 100 times 1.07 to the third. And as we go down this, it's just going to strike you that the exponent is always matching the year. So maybe instead of doing this 157 times, we can just say, all right, 
after 157 years, your balance is going to be 100 times 1.07 to the 157. And this is a lot bigger than $1,099, the amount we got with our simple interest. It's $4,104,432.30. And that is just amazing, right? This is so much greater, the growth, than we had for simple interest that it's, it's striking. And what starts to happen is, okay, so that cycle is amazing. Then we have other situations, like this was compounding once a year, but you can compound in other intervals. And I just wanna explain what that means first of all. So let's say you compound semi-annually, okay. So this throws a lot of people off. Let's just say this, that semi-annually first, that means twice a year, okay, that's good, twice a year. But let's say the 7%. Right, we'll keep we'll keep the same variables that P is a hundred dollars and then R is seven percent and then still time is one hundred and fifty seven years. Well when you're compounding seven percent semi annually, that does not mean you should write this down, highlight it for yourself, it doesn't mean you get seven percent two times. Right, maybe pause the video and write that. That throws everyone off. If I say you compound 7% semi-annually, that means you divide 7% by two and get that amount twice. So in our case, in this one right here, don't worry about that. In our case right here, what this means is you're going to get 7% divided by two, which is three and a half percent twice. And that's the way the language works. So if, you're, if someone says to you, hey, you get, this is 7% interest compounded 10 times a year, you're not getting 7% 10 times, you'd be getting 0.7% 10 times, right? 7% divided by 10. You always need to divide it by the compounding period. We call that, that thing down here N. That's the amount of times we're compounding or adding the money back on, right? Because compounding semi annually means you add the interest back on the principal two times a year, but it also means they were to divide the rate by two. That's just the standard language. And it's critical actually, because what that means is uh, we have a general formula for a balance, right? In, in this simple problem here, the structure for any amount of years was just that the balance equals the principal times one plus the rate to the, the amount of years t. And this formula is often useful. But in general, it's kind of a subset of this bigger formula, which is that the principal times one plus the rate divided by n, where n is the amount of times for compounding, right? That's being raised to the nt. And I'll show you in this problem why that makes sense, all right? So you don't have to memorize this formula. You have to understand what it means to compound semi-annually. That's where the division part comes in, this right here. Divide your rate by n. But I want to also make sure you're clear on the NT part up here. So in this little problem that we've got, we're looking at, let's see. All right, let's do time again. One year, two years, and so on and so forth. All right, we'll go all the way down to 157. So for our years now, uh, we're looking at our balance. So the first time we compound it, it's going to be after six months. It's going to be $100 times 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 2. And then again, whatever that total amount is, we multiply it again after the next six months by 1 plus 0 0.07 over 2. So you can see there it happened two times in one year. So after one year, it's not 100 times 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 2 to the first power like was before after one year it's two twice in that one year right it's the number of times you're compounding it per year that's the exponent and then you can see it again here is the second year you do we're already at a hundred times one plus point oh seven over two we were at the second power okay two times one that's going to be compounded again so it's going to be um 
a third time, and then a fourth time. So we're going to compound it two more times every year that passes. Right? So we're at, excuse me, two. Now we're going to be at 100 times 1 plus 0 0.07 over 2 to the fourth. After three years, it's going to be, I'll write this last one out so you can see. We're at the fourth, and it's going to happen another two times. So we're always adding two more compoundings each year. So it'll be 100 times 1.07 over 2 to the 6. Now for the 157th, it's going to be 100 times 1 plus 0 0.07 over 2 to the 157 times 2. Amazing, right? The 314th almost kind of looks like pi power. And this is going to make your balance go even higher than it was here. And that's another central principle of compounding. The more times you compound an interest rate, the, the better the return should be, up to a limit, which we'll discuss in a moment, but the better it gets better, right? And sometimes dramatically. So here, instead of 4,100,000, you get 4,912,129.81. Wow. We went up um, over $800,000, and that's just compounding it twice a year. That's a, quite the growth. So... Um, this is a pattern we love to look at, which is, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. The more we compound it, the more it goes up. Is there a limit on this, right? Because you can compound it. This is semi-annual. You can do monthly, daily, every hour, every minute. You can do it instantaneous, right? So let's go to our last example. Oh, I don't want that. I want, let me get one more of these current template. Okay. So we look at our last topic, which is continuous compounding. What a cool concept. So that, that cycle that we had, right? Um, <laughs> we, you've got principal, okay? Here's the p-value. You get some interest rate, and then, sorry about that, I don't know what that was. And then you get some interest amount, right? So there's your interest rate, and then some interest, and you add it back on. Well, we did it once a year, twice a year, every, what if you did this continuous right it's instantaneous it's abs kind of an abstract concept instantaneous infinitely fast compounding what would happen would you have an infinite amount of money well it turns out you wouldn't and here is the basic argument and this is where we get to the limit of continuous uh of the limit that describes this kind of growth all right so let's kind of backtrack and say what if what if your principal is just a dollar let's look at a dollar so P is $1. And let's make our interest rate 100%. Woohoo! Right, which is 1 as a decimal. Well, <clears throat> if I compound it once a year, so, so let's say N is the amount of times you're compounding it. All right, we'll look at, let's do N is one time a year, semi annually, twice, quarterly, monthly, every day. And then I think we'll be ready to look at what it looks like. To compound infinitely fast. All right. I should give myself some room here, but let's see what I make do as I go. All right. So 1, 2, 4, 12, 365, boom, up to infinity, kind of a big jump, but you'll see what I mean. So what we're going to look at for each of these compounding periods is essentially the balance, B. So if we compound $1.00, 100% once a year. What would that be? It would be $1 plus, excuse me, $1 times, which we're looking at this model right here, right? The formula B equals P times 1 plus R over N to the N, right? And we're just doing this for one year, okay? So there's, I could put the T there, but it's just one, so it's somewhat irrelevant. So for, for N equals 1, we're doing 1. P is 1 times 1 plus 1 over 1, 1 to the 1, which is 1 times 2, which is $2, right? You get 100%, and you get it once a year. Now, if it's compounded twice, think about what that means. You're going to get 50% two times. Now, getting 50% two times is better because you first get 50% of a dollar. That's 50 cents. Then you get 50% of that amount of money, which is 75 cents. So you get 225. 
and the math checks out. You do one times one plus your interest rate, 100 percent, divided by two to the second power. Because so you're doing it twice, you're getting 50 percent twice. And that's going to be 225. Well, what if you did 100 percent compounded four times? So you get 25 percent each time. You get four times. It's going to go up even again. Now it went up first 25 cents, but now less than 25. So it's, it's going up, but the amount it's going up by is not as much as it was before. Let's see what happens again. To 12 times a year, well, you do 100% divided by 12, compounded 12 times, and it goes up again. But again, it's decreasing the amount we're going up by, right? It's not going up the same amount each time. And 365, that's a lot of compoundings, okay? So it's 1 times 1 plus 1 over 365 to the 365th power. That's about $2.71, and that's pretty much where we're going, to this number right here. And that number is called E. And E describes this relationship right here. It describes that if you're if you're going one times one plus one over n to the n, as n approaches, we're not going to reach infinity. The way I wrote this implies that we're reaching it. We're going to approach it. That's going to be about two point seven one eight two eight. It, it keeps going. This is the number e. It's an irrational number, and we can formally capture this idea right here with the idea of with the word limit. Limit is kind of like a speed limit. It's something you approach. Right? You might get there perfectly, but you're getting there. As n approaches infinity, that's the way we write it, and we're looking at this expression, 1 plus 1 over n to the n. This is the definition of e. So it's not like pi, right? It's not a geometrical definition in this, at least its original founding. It's a definition of this growth right here. So it's a useful number to describe growth. And in our original problem, let me just give myself one more of these and we're done. Hang in there. I want to add a page. Wrong button, Sean. Press this button. Okay. <laughs> Here's the last thing. How do we deal with this with our original problem? All right, it's 1865, okay? You've got 157 years to invest the money. And you're getting 7%, okay? And P is 100. But what if that 7% was con compounded continuously? What's going to happen? Well, it turns out we can use this formula right here, P. Um, the balance we have equals P times E to the RT. And if you look at your calculator, you'll see an E button. It looks like this, lowercase e, not two e's, just one e. That's the number e. And this will tell us exactly what's going to happen. So we'll do this in a moment. Right? b is going to equal 100 times the number e to the r, 0 0.07 times t, 157. And this is going to be even larger than the numbers before. But I want to show you where this comes from. Because this seems like a different formula, but I'm telling you it's not. b equals p times e to the rt. That formula is this formula, p times 1 plus r over n to the nt, when n is getting really large and approaching infinity. These are the same formulas. This one's true only if this one's true. They are linked together. You cannot separate them. Can I convince you? I think I can do it. Okay. We have to remember, first of all, the definition of e. It's the limit as n approaches infinity. So a uh, the, the number we're approaching is n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the n. If we can find that, that's, that's our e. If we can find that in our formula here, as n approaches infinity, then we can get us to this formula here. It's a really cool little proof. And I'll start by writing like this. P times parentheses, 1 plus r to the n. And here's, it's, it's really fun because we're trying to get to rt, right? Oh no, we have nt, so we need to introduce r as an exponent. 
that must be a way to do it, so let's do it. If I put an R in there, I can't just throw a random R, it might change the value, I've got to balance it out. So if I put an RT right here, I can balance it out. But if I'm multiplying by R, the opposite of multiplication is division. So I do that. That is now, if I, if I were to evaluate this and multiply my exponents, think about what would happen, these R's would cancel and I'm right back to where I started. So I haven't really changed anything, but I did find a way to introduce the R without changing anything. Okay, cool. Next thing is that, amazingly, we have a reciprocal here. Okay, is that useful? Yeah, because if we say, this is the coolest thing to me, if you say, let's, I don't know, uh, let's say let A um, equal N over R. That's this exponent up here, right? Well, to get the reciprocal, this thing right here, how do you do that? Well, you take 1 over n over r. You take its reciprocal, literally. So that means, let's just write down what we're saying. With the quick substitution, we have 1 plus this thing right here is the reciprocal of this. So I'm going to write it this way. We could blink for now. This is an a, and then this is an rt. So this and this are reciprocals. So if our exponent is a, this is 1 over a. Okay, now I have a different letter here, but do you see it? This amazing thing right here? This structure right here, what's going to happen to this as a approaches infinity? As a approaches infinity? Well, it's going to look exactly like this. Just a different letter. And that's where the e comes from. Right here, this gives us p times e to the rt. That change will happen only if a is approaching really large values. You're saying, Sean, what's, what's a? Well, that's, in, that's, our, that's our compounding rate, right? And in that case, it's going to be approaching infinity. Right? It's kind of, it's, we said it a different way, excuse me. It's the ratio of the compounding rate to the interest rate. But the idea is that we can get towards e through that methodology. So it's still kind of there, right? It's the ratio of the compounding, number of times we're compounding it to the interest rate, but it gets us there. And if we do the calculation here for our original problem, the continuous compounding, the number goes even higher. It gets us into almost $6 million, 59278388. And this is really interesting. If we kind of backtrack what just happened, with simple interest, we're at $1,099. Nothing by comparison. We started compounding it once a year. We got into the $4,104,432.30 range. Semi-annually, 4912129.81. And then now, almost $6 million. Continuous compounding growth is amazing. And this is quite the useful tool. So in, in problems, you'll see this a lot. Use the PERT formula. We call it the PERT formula. Well, at least I do. Um, use the PERT formula if you have continuous compounding growth. All right. Hope that helped.